and swap over to our picks and bands scene as we get into game number three of the night. Team Career Life versus Team Berry Crunch. It's very, very tasty as we get to see some of these bands. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're on the side of Berry Crunch, please go ahead and ban out. Let's go down the list. Kled, take it away from Curry King. Scion, take it away from Return. We actually got double top laners up there, so I'm going to assume that Return might switch to another role and let Curry King take his top lane main. Now, he's not against 626, but Curry King said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and ban Fiora. She was a pretty big pain in the butt to deal with last time, so I'm just going to go ahead and ban Fiora. There it is, the Kled ban, no surprise there. The side of career life, if we look down the line, you're going to be wanting to ban away things like Foul Jester's Shaco, Mystic Warrior's Katarina, Cody's Thresh. Heal it up. Um, I don't... I, I can't think off the top of my head. Zin Zhao against Smartest, maybe? Uh, oh, Karthus against Smartest. Um, and there was also another jungle that was banned against Smartest. Diana banned against Smartest as well. All potential options there. So we'll see what they decide to actually go with. It's the Yasuo ban, even the Boxy isn't in the game. This might mean Mystic Warrior is back once again on that Katarina in the mid lane, which could be pretty deadly. That or Cody's going to get his Thresh. Either one, fantastic champions for them to be able to pick up for themselves. And feel, it definitely feels good when you get on your main. It says you're comfortable with it. really or LeBlanc for Heal It Up. There we go. Thank you. Appreciate that, Doc Shocker. LeBlanc definitely one that's pretty... Pretty potent currently, especially with Electrocute as it currently stands in the game. Has definitely made a huge presence before on the stream. Knocking some pretty heavy people down. Silas, banned away. He is very strong. Definitely worth a ban if you're looking at playing in ranked games. Anyone who knows how to play Silas can be played, can be countered, let's say that loosely. Um, but you have to shut him down super hard, and you have to keep him down. You really don't want him starting to snowball, because once he gets ahead, it's so impossible, so hard, to shut him down. His healing scaling is insane. As Alistar gets banned away by Barry Grunch, Wincarnation isn't in the game. They still say this strong support needs to go. Take it off the table, make life easier for ourselves. Curry King has no Kled. What's he going to play instead? It might be the Nasus. I think he played Nasus one time. Uh, assume that he's going to be playing a split pushing top laner that can also do a little bit of dueling. Darius is currently super strong in the meta. Definitely something to deal with as Curry King actually locks in the Nautilus. Not sure if this is a top lane Nautilus or a support Nautilus. Could also be trading it away. Could also be going support himself. Letting something else go in that way. Shaco picked in by Foul Jester, so he got his main... Mystic Warrior can grab the Katarina. Is that going to be the triple players for Berry Crunch that get all of their favorite champions? That would just be madness if they all did. I assume Mystic Warrior is just going to eventually grab the Katarina as he's playing around, have a little bit of fun swapping between a bunch of different ch champions. Got two seconds, one second. It is the Hecarim lock-in. Okay. So Mystic Warrior, despite having Katarina upset, I just made the last game of Katarina. Let me play something a little bit different. We're going to go for the Hecarim instead. Most likely for the top lane, considering that Shaco currently has might and should be going in the jungle. But we all seen Shaco top lane, so it could be Hecarim in the jungle as well. Lots of options there. We'll find out. I don't think Hecarim plays in the top lane quite as well as he does in the jungle. Likes his ganks. So if I had to pick, I'd say Shaco top, Hecarim jungle. We'll find out, though, as Euro Nation locks in the Morgana for the supportive side of career life. Again, top tier support. Makes a lot of sense. Everyone loves it. Great picks. Great magic. Black Shield to say, forget your fears. Forget your CC. Whoever I put this on is going to be fine. The one thing that I've seen a lot of people struggling on is when she jumps forward with the soul shackles, she often tends to die a lot. People don't use golden stopwatches nearly as much as they need to. Now, who checked out? Who left? Mm, a lot of people to run through. Oh, dive snuck in. Morg is the worst support in the game. Desvelado. Ooh, so spicy. So spicy. So spicy. Who who left? Uh, Euro Nation. Oh yeah, Euro Nation knocked out. Um, I I, guess, I assume that I'm friends with Euro Nation. Let me send him a message. See if he's on or what's going on with it. Nope, he's not online. 
Not sure what happened. Maybe his connection fell apart. Let's go ahead and switch back to the lobby for the moment. Hmm. We had some player swaps. Look at these teams. Last second swapping around. Uh, so this is what happens in the LCS. Uh, uh, not the... Okay. Uh, I would say new picks and bans. I'd um, say new... I need new picks and bans. Yeah. Let me see if I can message someone. Um, actually, I'm going to hop out of this call for just a second and jump in and let them bo both know very quickly. New picks and bands, guys. You do not have to do the yeah, same yeah. picks and bands last no, time. No, no, we go. We Sorry, go. I don't know. Uh, the same. New picks and bands. Probably... Just so you guys are yeah. aware, it's new picks and bands. You do not have to play the same ba picks and bands okay. last time. Perfect. Wait. Cool. Uh, but can we? No, you do not have to do the same picks and bands. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. You hold Clyde here. Okay. All right, we're back. I didn't want to give away too much secret information by being in the call and on stream. It's opportunity to try something new as we got some new people in. Smartest, welcome. Well, I think you're already playing. Someone did too. Welcome into the game. Dive as well, taking the place of Euro Nation, who probably had some DC issues considering that. I think he was playing from Europe. Uh, so, interesting stuff there. As Kled, banned away once again by the side of Barry Crunch, making things easy. We've gone to the same bands back and forth once again. Looking pretty steady, though. We have banning out people's main champions i think you're on the wrong i am on the wrong scene but it's not anything new there's nothing shocking what what what, <laughs> what what's new we could just cut right from the point uh this point in the game previously right to here and just say hey nothing's changed we just happen to have some name changes in the middle of the game it's, it's not a problem team. yorick banned away again as well so if we think about the bands that happened last time around i didn't have them memorized so i can't talk about them We'll just have to see what they ban away. For a moment, I was like, I can I recall yeah, I don't this? Remember either. I don't, can I recall I remember this? what we had, but the Yasuo Fjord bans, definitely target bans, as well as the Kled not letting Curry get his Kled this time around. And the Silas ban to finish it out. That's the same ban as last time. So they're staking to their bans. They say, you know what, let's take out some of these S tier champions. You don't want them, even if people are playing something they're comfortable on. Assume that Curry King is still going to lock in the Nautilus. Assume that Foul Jester and Chad are still going to lock in Shaco. And wait, we don't have Mystic Warrior anymore. So Chad will be new. Cody will be able to pick up a champion a little bit earlier than last time around. Jax, a different band this time than last game. Or last band. Yes, a lot of focus towards that top lane. Uh, I'm not sure. Is Return a top lane player? Uh, he top so, lane have... last game, but I don't know if he's a top lane main. I know that he is mainly a caster, and so I don't think he plays a ton. I also know that he played mid in a game that I watched him play not terribly long ago, so I have a feeling that he might be a mid laner uh, that also went top lane last game because somebody else really wanted to play in the mid. As Shaco locked in once again for our Jester, no surprise there. Curry King deciding instead this time around to lock in Draven as Draven was banned last time. This time he gets that champion. I think you went to Jared plays a champion quite a bit. So if he does get that, if he does play Draven quite a bit, I could be completely wrong. <laughs> um, that could be a good pickup for them. But Foul Jester getting a Shaco again. I don't know how he keeps getting a champion. He's like the one player with a main that he keeps getting this champ. Nautilus is locked in for Excellency Chad. So Cody still looking for the hooks, but wants something a little bit tankier to deal with that Draven in the bottom side, which is no real shocker considering that Draven has the highest damage of any ADC in the early game. He can definitely get rolling. And you went to Jared, locks in the Thresh against Cody. Hook for hook, gonna be a spicy bottom lane as Tiger's Nova locks in the Azir. 
for the mid lane. I'm interested to see where these players end up moving, if any of these champions end up moving around. Because uh, I know XCC Dive is known for that mid and top lane, but I know he, if he does play support, it's normally a Thresh. Um, so see if this champs move around a little bit for the, the next ban phase. We're gonna see the Alawi locked in for heal it up. See if that gets moved around, but most likely for that top. I mean, it will probably be for that top lane because he's moving on to a different player. Is waiting to see as Heal up is normally a mid lane player. So now we're gonna be looking at potential bans for the side of King Career Life against Smartest Jungle. Or someone did too as the ADC. Oh, they're just focusing out Curry in the top lane. I think Curry's gonna be playing Draven in the bottom lane. I feel like Returned is gonna go back on a Scion in the top lane, and all of these bands are gonna get kind of wasted up there. The other question is who's in the jungle? Dive? Probably in the jungle. Wait. He's got the teleport on the Draven, so he might be trading that over. It might be playing something else in the top lane. I don't know. A lot of uh, a lot of questions still surrounding these comps as the second ban for the side of Barry Crunch is going to come through the cane. Tension the jungle a little bit against them. Dive. If it is Dive, I like the ban there. But yeah, good stuff. They focused a lot of Curry fun. King's champion pool out. But I do like the bands from the side of Career Life as well. The Sivir and Lucian bands um, coming out, which uh, are great bands. I don't think into the Draven really wins <laughs> most matchups. Lucian may be the one where it, it goes even um, with that early game damage that Lucian can put out. But the Sivir ban uh, helped keep Thresh able to keep that uh, pressure up in the early game. Don't have that spell shield available as Heimerdinger is going to be locked in. Most likely for that's the mid lane. That's got to be Heimerdinger bot lane. No, I think that's Heimerdinger mid lane. I really think uh, that's Heimerdinger mid, and we're going to get someone else in the bottom lane to carry roll. If I had to pick one against that Draven, I would look for something like a Caitlyn or an Ash, someone that has pretty good harass from a huge amount of distance away. That short range um, it, Axe that Draven has to bounce off of you versus the Caitlyn Pilt of a Peacemaker Q or the um, Ash W. You know, there's a lot of options to just kind of harass a Draven out if you stay a pretty good distance away. Wait for Nautilus to find the right hook and maybe go in for a little bit more damage as Return locks in the Olaf as the potential jungle for career life. And we'll see what dive rounds this composition out. They got plenty of tank, they got plenty of damage, they need some burst. It's Graves. So that's going to be. Olaf top. Yeah, that's what it's looking like. Olaf in the top lane, Graves in the jungle. I like the Olaf top. I think it's a pretty strong champion right now, actually. And his ulti is pretty insane. This really gets locked in. Oh, I'm going to have to tell seconds. you, I told you so. We got three seconds. Oh, it's a Rise. Okay. Rise in the mid lane. It is a Heimerdinger bot lane. Uh, right? Unless it's a Rise bot lane. I think that might be a Rise bottom lane. I don't want to... It might be a Heimer bot. It might be a Heimer Nautilus bottom lane. I don't feel like that's quite as good into a Draven because his axes are just going to clear those turrets and just not really care, whereas Rise is a ranged champion. There it is. The Heimer switched over. Has the heal and flash. That means the signaling most likely for the bottom lane carry role. So, hey, superior analyst, I bow to you. Congratulations. <laughs> you this call is my coaching. Your bottom laner. My and coaching coming out. I, I still don't know that I like that. Uh, as I said, with Draven's axes, they're going to clear the turrets pretty quickly. You got some decent CC with the grenade, but you're so squishy in the early game that I feel a good Thresh hook could just end Heimerdinger's life before he has any opportunity to get CC on Draven. And again, we've seen so many Threshes that are really good about just stepping forward, throwing out the flay to set a play up. But we'll get into the analyst analysis a little bit more in a moment as we go through the players and the champions for the side of Team Career Life. We've got ourselves Curry King taking the Olaf in the top lane. You went to Jared with the Draven in the 80 carry roll. Tigers Nova on the Azir in the mid lane. Returned, returning! But this time on the Thresh support and dive with the Graves in the jungle. And for the side of Team Barry Crunch, we have Foul Jester playing his signature Shaco in the jungle. Ecstasy Chad playing Nautilus in the support. 
position heal it up playing rise in the mid lane smartest two playing a in the top lane and someone did too playing hybrid dinger at the bottom lane roll i was gonna say 80 carry roll but that's not an 80 carry hybrid dinger that's bottom lane ap carry hybrid dinger but uh interesting comps across the board i'm assuming shaco's gonna go ad otherwise gonna have a lot of ap damage with the rise hybrid dinger and if shaco and ap then hate shaco's ap but i think he is better ad but uh, yeah, definitely interesting comps across the board. I think I favor career lives for sure overall, especially if they get ahead. That team is scary if they get ahead. That's a lot of damage. I think it's a very similar idea to the last comp that we saw from um, the blue side where they had the Jax top. This time it's an Olaf who can get a little tankier and be more of a nuisance in team fights with his uh, Ragnarok to just run through the enemy team. But the Graves has a lot of damage and Draven, like you talked about before, probably one of the highest damage ADs. And Azir in the mid lane is a monster champion right now with that Conqueror can do so much damage in these team fights. Yeah, they're going to have some burst. They're going to have some heavy damage, and it's not even late game. Their late game's still going to hurt, but even in the early game, they're going to have pretty good pressure and damage in these lanes. They can win the lanes. If they win the lanes, they can snowball the game. Now, when it comes to team fights, later game, the side of Barry Crunch is no slouch. They've got the Alawi, whose favorite thing is to throw down that ultimate in the middle of a 5v5, tentacle slam everyone, and to crush them underneath that pressure. You also have Rise, whose spells are going to be bouncing back and forth between everyone. You've got Nautilus, who can knock up multiple people with his uh, undertow? No, that's Olaf's Q. Ah, I've had this way back when, but Nautilus hasn't played in so long. I'm now going to forget his ultimate's name. Um, either way, with his ultimate, and Heimerdinger as well has great teamfight presence once he gets those turrets down and can drop either a mega turret or CC a ton of people with a mega grenade. The question is, can they stall long enough to get there? I think that we should Death see... Church. Depth charge. Okie dokie. Thank you for looking that up. Uh, yeah, I think we're just going to see some early game pressure from Career Life trying to attempt a snowball and then Barry Grunch just trying to hold out until they get to uh, mid game when some of those turrets are down. They can group as three or four members and play to their strengths. I think it's going to be interesting for sure. I think if the Alawi can get ahead in that lane into the Olaf. Um, can get rolling and become a split push threat. Can be open up a lot of options. They can really do a one three one really easily too with the rise. If rise gets ahead as well, put rise in a side lane, allowing in the other side lane, and run this Heimerdinger Nautilus Shaco in the middle and kind of play defensive around Heimerdinger's turrets and wait for rise and Alawi to put pressure on the map. So that is a point to look out for. But we we'll only really see that set up if um, those two are having advantages where the other three are either going even or uh, at a disadvantage. So we'll have to see how that ends up playing out for sure. All right, so now we get to play a little bit of a game, and that is figure out who has the most points while we're still in this loading screen. I don't have long, so I got to cut down pretty quickly. 75,000. Oh, man, Azir's out. 400,000. It's got me in thrush. 600,000 foul jester. Oh, 600,000 points on Shaco. Brushing a little bit close to. Uh, I don't know. I think once you have a million points on a champion, you definitely are star material. But Shaco Jester, definitely a true mastermind on this Shaco as we load into the game. Number three, Team Career Life versus Team Barry Crunch. Thank you all who did join us tonight and that are still sticking around for this game number three. Should be a pretty good one. I've still got the hype, I'm excited. And what I really wanna see is if Returned can make a statement after last game in which he struggled so hard to really make anything happen. Actually, oh, he was making some plays for his team, but you are right, in that lane was very difficult for him, uh, we'll have to see on this Thresh if he can find those plays. They're looking to try and invade in this bot side. It looks like things are coming down with that Thresh. And the early damage from Draven. Let's see if they can find anything. The ward is there, so they're not going to get spot if they walk into this bush. 
Yep, all five are going to be seen as Pure Life trying to make the early play. They're going to get poked out by the Heimerdinger just a touch, and that says, hey, we've been noticed, we've been seen. Let's go ahead and head back. They got the ward, though, on that red blue buff. So once Shaco starts it up, they'll know that that's what he's going for. <laughs> There's no fun inside the chat for the graves. <laughs> Come on, man. Just give us an early first blood. That's all we want. All you have to do Get is type the three rolling. beautiful letters, no you. <laughs> <laughs> That's currently my favorite phrase. Whenever I find something that it works for, I'm just like, no you. Curry King, huh, got to start his blue this time. Yeah, that is interesting. The Heimerdinger is running Spell Thief's Edge as well. So he's looking for really strong poke. Yeah, which you would talk about... It those changes happened on this patch actually but that was to counteract the uh, zillion top where you didn't have a teammate next but you have a teammate in this lane so i'm interested to see how that ends up working for him instead of one of the uh, normal stars either like a doran's um a doran's ring or a corrupting bot trying to pick up a little bit of extra gold potentially in that bottom lane as in the top Malawi and Curry King starting off their smashing lane together but Curry King's actually looting out on this trade a little bit but keep in mind he's got extra auto attacks as he gets lower of help so that's something to keep your eye on even if he gets low health that could help him get a couple of extra autos now Jester level two ganking onto Tigers over the mid lane lands the box the flash forced out so no fear, there it is. The fear comes through on Tiger Stove. No one's gonna respond in turn though. Is he allowed to live? Is the play Ooh, from a turn on a nice play? Chad dropping low, ignite ticking away. Not able to live, but is excruciating low. As smartest on that top side also. Underneath 100 health, Graves around the corner. Foul Jester closing too. Could be some explosive play on the top side as Graves is looking to maybe come out of this brush or make a play. Foul Jester might be there before Flash the Graves is under turret. Graves underneath the turret takes a shot. They're trying to drop smartest for first blood. Curry King is extremely low, but can't find the auto attack as Lowey is just out of oh, range. Oh, the Q! The undertow comes out from Curry King, secures first blood for himself on the top side. Tigers Nova there, but dropping low in the mid lane, gets the barrier to shield himself against the other, but flashes forward to the lane. Oh. Last spell, taking out Azir. Heal it up, wins in the 1v1. Great play from Heal It Up, realizing that Tigers Over didn't have that flash. He used it when Shaco came into the mid lane before, so going for that play, flashing forward and landing, are using the spell flux to pick him up, pick up the kill. The hook lands onto the Heimerdinger. Flash forced out, gets underneath the turret. Draven with some excellent damage, a nice stand aside. Says Heimerdinger, there's nothing for you to be able to do besides flash away. Chad's healed up quite a bit underneath the turret. But he's only a defensive Nautilus, and the pressure continues to mount from career life's bottom. They're putting so much pressure. They had that level two. Uh, I was going to talk about it before the fight broke out in the top side. They got that level two advantage and put so much damage down onto the Nautilus, forcing out that heal. So both sums are now down for the Heimerdinger. Um, so it's going to be very tough for them in this lane. Curry King clearing out the tentacles. Smartest doesn't have another one. He might oh. be going down here. He just gets dropped as those extra auto attacks that Olaf gets boosted attack speed as he gets low health comes in huge once again. Good stuff from Curry now 2 and 0. Oh, this is looking tough for this Alawi. You want to get those early advantages. He should be able to farm up and split push fairly well if that's what he opts to go for, but it's going to be very difficult for any of the members of this team to really deal with this Olaf. And Chad having played so defensively on this bottom side means that both bottom lanes for Barry Crunch are level three to the level fours of career life. One of those times you may just want to go ahead and recall, try to get what items you can, even if it's just a sliver of gold, you know, buy some boots or some potions or something. Because standing around on this bottom side, losing XP and losing farm, is not gonna help you in the long run. Someone did down 15, over 15 farm to the Draven. Oh, Cody saying he forgot Conqueror on his Nautilus. Ouch, not good as return, trying to make a roam play into the mid lane. Drops the Dark Passage to pull Graves in, heal it up, running away. Should be able to escape to the flash forward from return, can't find the 
death sentence. Dive still gonna chase forward. He doesn't have much mana though. Blast cone available for healing up. Take over the wall. That's the longest blast cone I've seen in a while. Rise looks like he may escape, but he's recalling and brush out off to the side. Smartest gonna get the tentacle pull for the moment. The test of spirit on to dive, slowing him down as the help from Rise comes through. All allow he needs is just a little bit more damage. Return lands oh, and it's an ignite as the Rise is sticking around to recalling, and now Smartest is gonna drop as well as Curry King just comes slamming through of what started its potential. Nice return play from Barry Crunch. They get punished for. Yeah, good, good uh, rotations there from Career Life. Return made his way up to that mid lane and followed it all the way up to that top side to help pick up a kill onto the rise and Curry King rotating down to get another kill for himself. Now 3-0 and on this Olaf into this Alawi. He should be able to stomp this lane anytime he tries to fight. It should easily go in the way of Curry King. Four kills, two, one, a thousand, two thousand gold lead for career life. They're doing well for themselves. Most lanes doing just fine. Azir in that mid Maybe down a kill, but he's up 10 farm over this Rise, who's trying to make a escape from the mid lane earlier. Really, this Shaco is the only one who's up on his opponent. 10 CS up and having done fairly well, but it's Shaco. There's only so much that he can do. And eventually, m some of the players from Career Life are just going to get way too much. Oh, Ooh, I'm pretty sure Nox to heal it up backwards. He's going to root Tiger's Nova up. The level 6 Azir not going to be able to solo it. Heal it up. Still trying to take oh, him the down. Barrier. The barrier keeps Azir alive. And Graves helps Tiger's Nova pick up his own kill in the mid lane. Good stuff there from Tiger's Nova. Beating that fight out. It looks like he up was going to find the kill. But the barrier keeps himself alive long enough to get the damage in the top side. Oh, got the tentacle slams from Smartest Ultimate slamming down, but Olaf's just got way too much attack speed. He pops his own ultimate, so he isn't even concerned with the lack of CC that Aurelia brings to a fight. As Chad roaming through the jungle, trying to find a play on return, but he's already picked up Mobi's boot, so he is out. A speedy boy running around the jungle here, looking for plays, hooks across the map. Nobody caught sight of Graves, who I think was stealing away wolves, and then just recalls in the enemy team jungle. I think he just snuck out of there as I watched it back on the stream. I, I see that, yeah. I don't know if it's inspired by a turret. I guess the turret wasn't active. It wasn't seen. Either way, still good stuff from career life across the board. And Olaf becoming a huge problem. The top side, four, zero, and zero. Completed his fade. I think he's still sitting on 2,000 gold. So any recalls now, we'll get to see what he completes as Graves goes back to farming his own jungle. Oop, Black Cleaver, just completed by the Olaf. Yeah, Olaf is so far ahead of the Alawi at this point. He's got a 2,100 gold lead for himself in his lane. That's most of where this gold lead is actually coming from, but across the map, everybody has an advantage. Jungle versus Over there Jungle, later. the ultimate from Shaco. We'll see if he can find the kill. He's got the clone, dashes forward, dives gonna drop, foul gesture. Secures his first kill of the game over his opponent as the hook comes through from the Thresh onto the Nautilus. Lays Chad backwards. They both have level six in this bottle lane. Keep your eyes on that. Oh, shuffle. shuffle. Can't catch foul gesture. He's got double buffs, but he's repositioned his ear into a terrible spot. So Alawi will be able to pick up a kill. Heal it up, assisting on that one in the bottom lane. Heimerdinger was picked off by the side of Career Life's bottom laners. Foul Jester still having fun, bouncing around, playing those mind games with the blue team. Gonna try to pick up his own scuttle crab. Excuse me. Uh, good stuff there from the side of Berry Crunch. Finding a kill for himself onto the Alawi might just reset his kill gold, so maybe it wasn't worth it, but uh, did get a kill. Hopefully he can get something out of this. Currently sitting on 1,200 gold for himself. He's going to back get some items. Still don't think he can win the 1v1 right now as of yet, but uh, maybe in a little bit. And again, though, we're not actually shocked by any of the events that have come out because we talked about how the laning for the side of career life, they have the pressure in the lanes. They are going to be overall winning. Azir, the only one who's kind of just keeping even with this uh, 
rise for the bottom lane winning for the side of career life top lane Olaf being victorious but it's gonna be oh, more TP. about these group plays Alawi TPing in being joined by Shaco over the wall but smartest what are you doing stepping forward aggressively and three members return is here gonna find the death sentence Alawi should drop Tiger Snow but gonna join as well and say hey this is not the group play that you want foul gestures invisible but I don't know that he can escape he just gets out of sight for a moment return King gonna chase him down pick up a double kill as well including now the Rift Herald as that is set up for the side of career life to secure. Draven gonna try to solo defend his bottom lane turret. Hey, yeah, that was an interesting play right there and Curry picks up another double kill. Now 6-0 and oh on this 11. Oh my gosh, the Draven damage. Hope throws out the Whirling oh. Blades, trying to reposition, but Thresh is coming in. He could solo this. He doesn't have Ignite available yet, so maybe he can't solo it as Chad doesn't take the Blast Cone over the wall. Instead, will run his way. Jump. Nice! Oh. Flash as well to escape Tiger Nova's Emperor's Divide. Woo! Little tricksy. I like it. That was pretty awesome. Excuse me, I'm yawning. Good flash there. Good play from Chad to get out of that one. I was for sure he was dead in that play. Um, but I was really going to talk about... Oh, so I'll just jump over the wall so he is getting out safely. I'm going to talk about the lanes, like we said. The bot lane is definitely has that advantage with the Draven, and the top lane on the Olaf has an advantage. Both mid laners here are late game scaling mages, um, but he loves playing it really well in this lane, avoiding those Emperor's Divides, avoiding the soldiers, so that Tiger's Nova is not able to find a lot of his damage, or her damage, sorry. Um, but coming into late game fights, we'll have to see if he lit up can pop off uh, on this rise, or if Tiger's Nova is going to get the better advantage. Might be tough as the Olaf is extremely fed. But oh, oh, he oh, got it! No, oh, yeah, I dive couldn't get the Drake. Is shielded for the moment by the Thresh. Dark passage. However, Shaco is allowed to run away until Tiger Snova jumps in. No Ember to survive available. So the Shaco still on the run is able to escape for now. Thresh continuing to try to chase it and get a little bit of vision and pressure. Heal it up, chasing onto Tiger's Nova. Dive is also extremely low. Not oh, forcing flash. the flash, but the root still comes through for the return on this Thresh. He needs to split somewhere. He's still going to drop. Heal it up. Able to secure the kill and control war found out for a little extra gold for the Nautilus. He up doing really well for himself on this rise. Now 2-2-1 two, two and one. is being really... In my opinion, the bright spot for this team is uh, done fairly well in this lane. As finding kills for the team across the board has three of their has been a part of three of the four kills, I should say. As Curry might find smartest here again, but oh. takes a lot of damage. Oh, the oh, got him! Comes through in the one v one. Olaf's attack speed wins once more, but the tentacle still slam for the finish and make sure that the two of them will ace each other in the 1v1. You just got a thousand shutdown gold for that kill, too. Hashtag definitely worth. He's still down about uh, just under uh, just under 2,000 gold, but he's going to be able to pick himself, finish off that death stance first item. Um, but good stuff there for Smartest. I did not expect him to win that into a 7 or 6 and 0 Olaf at the time. Now we'll just are chasing on to dive. We saw this went last time. The Shaco was able to secure a kill. Doesn't have, or has his ultimate. Besides and he stole the blue it. buff. Steals the blue buff. That's what I mean. He's so good on his champion. Knowing its limits, hops over the wall. Escapes the members of Career Life are trying to collapse. And I kind of like the collapsing that Career Life is doing where they are collapsing early. They say we know that Barry Crunch's advantage in their strength is in these team plays. So let's just group as a team and play early. Now the CT comes through onto UN to Jared. He's got so much damage. He's forcing the Heimerdinger out and to back. Rip Herald spawned in the mid lane. In the meantime, the whirling death from Draven to bottom lane. Couldn't finish off the Heimerdinger. Foul Jester trying to look for the play. His clone is popped. Oh. He is able to escape as well. And Rise finishes off the Graves. We're underneath the turret. Draven. The turret should drop. In the meantime, as Draven secures the kill onto Heimerdinger on the bottom side with just massive damage. Go ahead. Got that kill in a one versus two. This Draven has so much damage. Almost got the kill on a Nox as well, but he lit up in this mid lane. Oh, getting dropped low. Tiger's Nova secures the turret. Could put his own turret there. Emperor's oh, Divine says we'll take you out, Rise. Before you can even respond, the foul Jester gonna get to the backside of the fight and jumps in, getting a little bit of damage. The fight switch over to the bottom side is Chad doing what he can to tank up against you and to Jared underneath the turret. The turret was shooting the Thrash, who just sidesteps out of the turret's range and reset once again. That turret should go maybe down. I think Draven's got enough damage with the minion wave. They've only got two minions left. New wave is crashing. 
That should secure the bottom lane turret as Heimerdinger not going to be in a position to actually contest the moment. Foul with Jester. <gasps> Whew. Playing on the knife's edge. You went to Jared chasing in on to Heimerdinger. One, two, oh. three. Uh, okay, three and a half axes would have taken Heimerdinger out. But oh. return. Oh, wait, goes down and Heimer gets the credit underneath the turret. Heimer with the poke. Gets a little bit of a kill there on the bottom side. It's like the count from Sesame Street with this Raven damage right now. One, <laughs> One Raven uh, axe, two, two uh, Raven axes, three Raven axes. Ah, ah, ah. Beautiful. Almost actually took out the higher nigger. I have barely any. I think he's under 50 HP. Let's check that back. But, Apparently uh, that Draven is 2-0 oh, and 1. Infinity Edge completed and a second BF sword as well. So he is a happy, happy Dracula axe-throwing behemoth at the moment. Uh, <laughs> Dive able to assist his team quite a lot. 0-2 oh, and 5. However, struggling to deal with Shaco, who's stealing away his buffs and now going to try to steal away the Scuttle Crab as well. I think that... Raves could not get it as whoop again first divide onto the right in the middle lane. He's got a little bit of a shield. Tiger Snow down under half. He's being bursted by Foul Jesse, who's got the red buff. Healing oh. on Trap Flow, but return walks oh. in, takes it with an auto attack. He's gonna miss the Q as Curry King walks in for a moment. Gets a little bit of shield that says, I can't chase the Shaco, so I'm gonna head back to the top side. <laughs> return showing up to get that kill. Taking that away from Graves as he almost had to stress kill the game using that collateral damage, I believe. Yeah, that's his ultimate. You went to Jared trying to do what he can. One axe, two axe, but no more axes are going to go through at the moment because the Nautilus is just being a bit of a pain. He's dropping low. However, the CC eight, eight. from someone can't All the shield. land in the time. And Chad's still running away as the fight on the top side. Curry King having his spirit tested underneath the turret will take a bit of a beating from that. And allow is actually getting tanky enough to handle some of that Olaf's damage. Yeah, that Eve from the Alawi does so much damage in the lane, plus the buffs that she got, giving that some cool introduction. If he can land that, might be able to turn these fights around, has that Death Stance available, and is still sitting on his ultimate, the Leap of Faith. So if Olaf wants to fight this, it might still be tough, even though he is up 7 to 1. Or he is now 7 to 1 on that, and up 1,500 gold. Oh, Olaf fighting against the Alawi. Oh, he's on the turret, side. though. Olaf is so low, but the Alawi taking a ton of turret shots. Has to back away and will burn <gasps> down. Died. I'm not sure what that was from. Corrupting potion, maybe? Ticking away? No, hold on. There's no ignite. It it's could gotta have been be corrupting. A rune. Corrupting, is that over time? Yeah, and burns the enemy for 25 magic damage. The so corrupting potion. Able to take down Alawi, giving Olaf his eighth kill of the game. And now he can freely hammer away on that top lane turret. Ask it a couple questions. Knight Shaco ultimate gets himself out of harm's way as Return had the play ready and position. Fear not even going to come through onto the members of career life as they group hard and start this ocean break on the bottom side. They pick their advantages in lane early. Now they're grouping faster. The snowball commences. Emperor's Defiant oh, on the two members fine. throwing them back in. Sand Soldiers decimate the Heimerdinger. Dive in trouble. He's going to drop as well, though as they've been trading around just a little bit. The Azir was cleaned up as well. Healed up with some pretty good damage. Foul gestures, I think, actually helped find the execute. Return, looking for a position. Death charge. Death charge, knocking up the Draven. He's going to be dashing forward with the help of Ooh, the Dark look. Passage. Thresh traded over, but Shaco is wrecking the enemy team. Can Nautilus go down before the Draven falls? No. So Nautilus lives, but Curry King still having his way on the top side. So that was an entire four members for one on the bottom as Curry King wins out yet another one we want on the top side. That was interesting play across the board. Good stuff there from, from Barry Crunch. They lost two, I believe, in that bot side fight. They lost Heimerdinger and the Rise. Um, but did manage to pick up kills onto that Draven and the Azir and the, I think the Thresh there too? Yeah, in the middle of that team fight. So they did really warp themselves, didn't get the dragon, but managed to get some gold back from the fight. Oh, Foul Jester ulting, and a nice little bit of clone play. Causes Curry King to back up. Ross nice ult, and he's got the root onto Curry King as well. There's nothing this Olaf can do. He's gonna go down. Beautiful play from Foul Jester, waiting for the ultimate from Rice to come in. And they secure themselves a nice shutdown go from the Olaf, and heal it up is the one who secures it now. A nice 5-5-5 five, five, five is scoreline. Perfect place for that shot. I'm going to go to 
go to on this rise that late game and damage Thread and provide into the hook. Him backwards, but the hook from Thresh doesn't get him over the wall. The Ignite should take him down. Tigers Nova is being dropped low by Nautilus, who's 1v1 at the moment, or 1v2 doing. Still gets dropped. Tigers Nova able to survive. But the rise also live. Ignite not quite enough to take him down. He didn't have Service Embrace, so it might have just been natural health regen that kept him alive. He came down, maybe got a little bit of a shield in the middle of that fight, keeping himself alive just barely. Uh, good stuff there from Chad to keep his mid laner safe and get out of that fight alive. Oh, Jester, oh, the hook! Oh, and the play, pulling follow Jester back. Not quite sure why he was dropping the shield, but someone did gonna drop to the Draven who's getting free time, taking everybody down. Returned under 300 health though, been bursted out at the moment. All the box is gonna be cleaned up. Our Jester <laughs> finds the kill on top of a control ward. Now Dive is in oh. trouble, drops to the rise, heal it up with a good play. Oh, That's look at the flash. Kill flash from Draven. Everyone drop the booze as he's gonna drop himself. 20 kills to 16, but Barry Crunch making them fight for every inch that they're taking. Azir gonna get Tiger pinched Nova. between the Nautilus and Foul Jester, who doesn't have his ult up available, so this... Oh, Emperor's Divide says, Shaco, get out! And Shaco says, I can hop back in. Good stuff overall. Oh, my voice cracked from Barry Crunch. They're looking rough in that early stages of the game. Um, still that top lane is a little rough for Smartest to deal with, but heal it up and Foul Jester are running havoc with the help of Excellent Chad. Probably CC for these two to do so much damage to the rest of the members besides the Olaf right now. Oh. Getting advantages for himself, the hook! Chad has to run away, I think, with that nice little bit of a box of the Shaco and the Flash Force out, he will escape. And this is something to note. What originally was almost over 3,000 gold lead for the side of career life at 8 minutes in. We're down to a 1,000 gold difference separating these two teams, which isn't that much. Most members for both sides completing their second items and moving into their third. Raven picking up yet another BF Sword as he's gotten himself the rapid fire cannon to add to his range and a bit of extra damage. Olaf, two and a half items with that Tiamat. But all the items in the world won't save you if you can't find the kills. And at the moment, Barry Crunch, especially Foul Jester, every time a fight breaks out, he gets to the backside of it. He finds either an execution or shoves someone in a direction they don't want to go and heal it up. Is playing huge. Making use of that seven kills at this point as they're gonna try to turn onto you and to Jared the burst is huge But he gets out with a nice shield from the thresh dive gonna have to run as well foul jester bouncing forward looking for all he needs is an auto attack with the slow from red buff dive oh. Don't think he's gonna be able to escape this shoot to the back The jungle after the side of career life goes down once more Foul jester is running a train currently as Tiger Nova managed to pick up the bot Inner oh, turret. Curry King walking in, trying to 1v4 the TP in from the rise as well. Curry King has to run. Ragnarok popped to get him out. Oh, he pops the E, but it was on the clone of Shaco. So he drops his heal it up, drops the Seraph's Embrace, get out of harm's way after picking up a double kill underneath the enemy team turret. And this is that grouping power that we talked about. As Foul Jester gonna go golden, trying to avoid the damage of Azir who's coming into the backside. And oh. first divide secures three members. Tiger Nova goes huge in the <laughs> at the end of that fight. Uh, that was a huge Empress divide. That was massive. Got shut down gold onto the Shake from the Shaco, I believe, uh, onto this Azir, which is going to be huge for this team. Career life needs one more person to really show up with the Olaf, but Tortis. Smartest able to kill the Azir, but he loses the dragon and will drop down as well. Rise has showed up here at the end of the fight, though, trying to finish off you. Oh. oh, he does actually secure you. And Jared still goes down to dive, though. A lot of kills being traded between these two teams. And once again, suddenly, where uh, Barry Crunch was down 1,000 gold, they're now down 3,000 gold again. Yeah, that Azir picked up a lot of gold in the end of that team fight. And, uh,. Trying to see if Dive can get some gold of his own, come back and maybe try and come back into this as he might be jumped up by Foul Jester. 
Oh, Blast going used. I like the hook to keep the shakeup from being able to hop over as oh, Nautilus trying to play himself. Lance the hook on to return. He's going to get that sentence back and the rest of the team as Olaf starting to wreck his way through them. He's popped the Ragnar, rocketing a lot of damage down, but he hits the close. Oh. Takes the death sentence, or takes the uh, dark passage from the Thresh out of harm's way. But Graves has already dropped his ears. The second my efforts divide onto two members. That will just stuck in the wall. wall. <laughs> He's invisible, though, so he is not seen for the moment. The flash will return as soon as he pops himself back up. The hook lands onto Allowy. This could be 3v1 as smart as can't take that much damage. Drops the ultimate, but isn't going to be able to do anything. Rise finds the kill on the Thresh oh. on the end of the fight as you went to Jared. Nice! Nice knockback with the stand aside. That's going to be the rise falling as well. You went to Jared securing his sixth kill and career life. Struggled a little bit, but now has just come back in force. And they're going to push down the mid lane second turn. Tigers Nova is now coming alive in these fights. Has so much damage now with those three items built on this Azir with that Conqueror. Is popping off in these team fights good stuff there from him or her and you went to jared is doing really well for himself on this raven you talked about that e there cc heal it up just enough so that he couldn't get his damage down onto both those members he's here and the draven in that fight and that's gonna be baron unless it's foul oh, gesture oh he got it stolen foul just sacrifice his life but steals the bear and for team berry crunch oh no to i did knock the high redinger back so they get two kills but lose the baron and berry crunch have a tiny lifeline back into this game they have two members with that baron buff as well i think nautilus and the alawi have it currently but it doesn't matter they say we don't care that you guys got the baron buff we're just gonna push down the million anyway all right smartest Backing away, dive in trouble. Azir will start his own turret on that second tier in the mid lane. So the siege continues. Current King in the front. Smart is going to be stepping forward until the play from Threshold. Two people in. Smart is getting a huge ultimate on the multiple members. Damage. Rises is destroying as he steps forward, finishes off the Olaf. He can continue this rampage. Ults himself to find himself oh. the Azir. And now he can continue the turn on to return as well. Plays both backwards, but oh, the charge. depth charge knocks both members up. CCing them in place. The flash force out from UN to Jared is dive is also running away. Heal it up. Really wanted to chase in. Can they? Escape dive splitting away from you to Jared, but he can't get over the wall. He was trying to uh, quick draw over the wall, but he misplays it, goes down, and Barry Crunch come out huge. Huge play from Smartest and heal it up in that fight, as well as Chad. He had CC down, helping out heal up to pick these kills up. He left doing so much damage, but good ulti from Smartest there. He did get taken down, but had so much damage onto all the members of Team Career Life, and they're gonna pick up a turret, possibly another turret, because they have the Baron buff with Chad. Yeah, and on top of that, Foul Jester's clone basically absorbed that entire turret damage, so the wave was still available. They're gonna back away, though, not go for the inhibitor just yet. They know that with that open inhibitor, they've got a lot of pressure back into the game, closing, again, the gold gap from three to 2,000 gold difference. Foul Jester gives himself a red buff. The Drake next up on everybody's mind as the camera pans over. It's a Mountain Drake. First Mountain Drake of the game. One of the things I liked about that play from Barry Crunch underneath that mid lane turret of their own was that Smartest has been kind of building a little bit more towards his tank recently. You can see that Bramble Vest picked up the Jarm's Fist. Step forward, absorb the pressure from the entire enemy team, allowed Heal It Up to basically have fun and the doing damage aspect, and they bursted everyone down. The side of Career Life have double ocean breaks, but it's if you take your time with it, they're gonna heal it back oh. up. Alawi able to find one kill onto the graves. As the Shaco not quite able to get in. Rise TPing in though, wants to still make a play. Tigers know has got damage over the wall. Will Sharima shuffle his way out? And that will be the play from Career Life trading one for one, backing away. Olaf free pushing on the top side. Yeah, they've done fairly well. Oh, Foul Jester dropping the Tiger Nova! User went to Jared, secured the kill, but a lot of that was off the Tiger you know, Tiger's Nova played the Sand Soldier. Sand Soldiers, I can totally speak. As the Mountain Drake started up a very crunch, they've only got two members here. They need to play safe. Ultimate from Heimerdinger completely miss that Thresh, so now they can step forward and start to posture towards it. Curry King focusing on the top lane turret, unconcerned with what's happening around the Drake. Draven secures the Mountain Drake. Curry King gonna chase in onto Jad, under toe, slowing the Nautilus. He's got a hook if he wants to use it to get underneath the turret. Instead, he's gonna hook himself back in onto Curry King, just taking a bit of damage on the way out. 
hurry. He's just splitting. Austin for that split Heal push. Heal it up, finds the room, oh. and the Ragnarok pop! Blasco, however, gets healed up out, and that is enough for the Olaf to say, all right, I'm going to it's going to go back and farm and escape. Picking for the Rebel. I'm interested to see if he keeps opting for the split push strategy. Has that TP available if the team wants to make a play? As Gold or Guardian Angel is now picked up for the Shaco. See if that next fight, if he can use that to his advantage, pick up some kills. Um, definitely gonna be a big turning point in this next fight. If Fairy Crunch want to get back in this game, they have to win this next team fight and get that middle inhibitor as they've already broken the base open. He doesn't have to get an ace, but definitely need to kill Tigers Nova and you and Jared. Those two are doing so much for uh, career life in these team fights and Olaf splitting in the top side of the map as Smartest is opting to counteract going towards the bottom side. Um, as I don't believe he can currently win that 1v1. That's not gonna land from the Nautilus, oh, but in oh, trouble. He does have a GA though. His ultimate has been popped. Olaf roaming down from the top side. Allowing splitting on the bottom side. This could be bad. The ultimate oh. from Heimerdinger getting a little bit of damage, but the Nautilus is already gone. The stun onto the Thresh, but he flashes away. He's escaped. Foul Jester trying to hop in. Might be able to secure the kill. Allowing has TP'd into the fight. So she is here, but it's currently a 5v3 as the Heimerdinger and Nautilus have both gone down. This is not good for Barry Crunch. However, they're going to try to split the wave in the mid lane, head towards the open inhibitor as Olaf, which is into the top side, should be able to secure at least one inhibitor turret. Interesting positioning from Barry Crunch. They don't have to pick on dive, though. Oh, the flash forward from Heal It Up just to make sure that he gets the last little bit of damage down there. It is. It took a little bit of time and a little bit of spells. Oh, Jester GA is hot. This Smartest is hooked. Oh, the Emperor's provide a little bit too early. Oh. Smartest smashing through. Shaco's the one who gets the kill credit for turn lands. A nice hook on to Smartest. I don't think he wanted to do that, though. Even the play can't be enough to help you and to Jared pick up the kill. The inhibitor in the mid lane. They're going to lose. Oh. He drops. The Draven popped by Heal It Up. Top lane turret and inhibitor gone, though. Security so King. Is this the over. game? Curry's the only one left alive! Inhibitor, Curry King the only one up as three members are pushing in from Barry Crunch. Rises here, he's got the damage. Smartest is able to destroy everything and heal what? it up. It's just a monster on this rise. 18, seven and seven. Ladies and gentlemen, you have your victors as Barry Crunch played a wild game. Even in gold, ends it and takes the victory. I am super impressed. What a Gutsy call to go for at the end there. If they didn't win that fight, they were going to lose for sure. But they managed to win the team fight. Good play from Suarez getting the pick onto Tiger's Nova so that she couldn't get any damage down in that team fight. And he went to Jared having to be forced away. Um, and then pick up the kills with the help of Heal It Up. Like you said, insanely strong in that late game. And Curry wasn't able to push fast enough to deal, to counteract uh, what was happening there. And then wasn't able to back in time after they lost that team fight and the game was already over crazy crazy craziness so many good players so many good plays uh i think that tigers nova is definitely one to keep your eyes on in the future especially if they get their hands on that azir you went to jared also showing up nicely on that drave especially in the early game against Heimerdinger. just said you know what let me take my uh my counting class i don't don't even need all five fingers to finish you off and Curry King dominating on that Olaf in the top side in the early game. But in the end, that team play, Barry Crunch, we talked about the fact that that uh, grouping power of Rise AoE, Smartest's Alawi could turn things around. And guess what? <laughs> it did. <laughs> Are we both talking about the shake and rework able to walk through walls? <laughs> that was a funny interaction. Uh, do we run through MVPs in our moment? Please do. Please do. All right, so for career life, I'm going to give, hmm, this is a tough one because there's really three players, in my opinion, that played uh, really well. The early game was really dominated by Curry King, but didn't really translate that into a huge advantage. Um, I'm going to have to give honor mention to, I have to give Arnold to Curry King. He did super well in the early game. Wasn't able to turn it into a big advantage for their team. I kept, kept that goalie, kept smartest down for most of that game until the late game there. But Tigers Nova is going to get MVP for me. 
had some really good plays for the team, did a lot of the damage coming into those late-game team fights. Um, had a few plays in the early. Am I? Yes. I'm about to give it a few to his Tigers. Anyway. Uh, yeah, had a lot of good team fights in the mid game. Um, and then for the side of Team Barry Crunch, auto mention is going to go over to Foul Jester uh, on this Shaco. Played super well, helping get healed up ahead in the early stages of that game. But healed up is going to get MVP 18 7 and 7 on this rise. Was insanely strong in the late game team fights, like you talked about, and did really well in the early game into the Azir. But I want to give a shout out to Ecstasy Chad running around with those two members, like we talked about in the mid game, turning those fights around where we thought they couldn't actually win them into that Draven and Azir. Uh, found a lot of damage and the CC from the Nautilus helping them secure those kills. So good stuff from Berry Crunch to actually get that win. All right. Well, congratulations to all the players for the entire night. Tigers Nova, I know you wanted to get into another game. We're going to switch over and run a Marbles game, and then we're going to be switching games as well. We're going to try to run something else a little bit fun for probably the next hour or so. So if you're interested in checking that out or potentially joining, you're more than welcome to. What I wanted to say briefly before we get to that is... We'll be back casting games of League of Legends next Tuesday night. But here's the kicker. It's our team stream night. If you've got a team of five players, you've got an entire almost week to put your team together. Get onto that Discord. Sign up under stream team night. There is going to be rewards for teams. Now, this is a team. So you want five members that are going to be playing more often than not. Um, a team of five players. Uh, there's going to be rewards after a while check the discord next tuesday for more information regarding the rewards that your team can earn over time for playing on team stream tuesdays and winning that's kind of the key is you, you kind of got to win to get the rewards anyway all as i said uh put yourself the team together get it into the discord we'll see you next tuesday night for stream team night we're not over though tonight as we are going to run to oh oh yes i also wanted to throw a shout out to um tomorrow night we're also going to be running